Welcome to the Lake Show podcast presented by Jack in the Box. It's a weekly deep dive into the biggest stories and topics surrounding the Los Angeles Lakers. Allie Clifton, Mike Bresnahan, Broderick Turner, BT from the, the LA Times. used Broderick moniker. Wow. <clears throat> Allie, I've known BT for almost 20 years. I still don't understand how you get Brad from Broderick. You know, Brad should be from Bradley. In fact, a former Laker coach used to call Brad Bradley all the time, but that's, that's not your name. And you never corrected him. Frank Hamblin, either, did you, Brad? Because Frank was a good guy, Michael Francois Bresnahan. <laughs> Unlike you and that haircut you have going right yeah, now. Don't, pre- don't pretend like <laughs> don't pretend like you're not impressed. Did your parents nickname you Brad? My uncles did. Oh, okay. Because someone tried to call me Broad for short. <laughs> As you laugh. <laughs> yeah. That's and People all call I'm me going to say is time. that I am a Brad and a Broader Rick. I'm not a Broad for short. I do like Broderick. Thank you, Allie. I really like Broderick. Oh, okay, That's his byline yeah. in the LA Times, Allie. It's 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 smart. It's very, very distinguished, Broderick. Well, I'm those things, smart and distinguished. Oh, well, <laughs> that's up for debate depending on the day. Just kidding. <laughs> BT, how are you? You know, I couldn't be better. I'm feeling my high. From? From Paris. <laughs> when do you come down? Usually around January when it's oh, really cold. Oh my goodness. Oh, what, look, 36 days, you stay in your high, too. Yeah. Did you go to Anaheim? Were you with Brez on the sidelines? I was. I was shocked when he left me from the sideline. Brez, where you going? He was the sideline reporter. He Shocking, was. isn't it? I got so many text messages like, who is that dude? I just <laughs> said, some dude. You know, Was that your first walk-off interview? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? First time I've ever done sideline. Wow. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. Uh-oh. Yes. I loved your third quarter hit. Thank when you. Stu said, tosses it over to Brez, <laughs> coming out of halftime. And Stu says, Brez, what did the coaches tell you? Well, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> They're still in there, and yeah. I had to come talk to you guys. <laughs> right out of time, I was Stu. like, could you be more like, I was like, that is amazing. That was like legendary of you, Brez. Like, now you, you and were... then delivered a great thing on D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. And then you tossed it back with some humor and said, I guess that's why I'm here and not playing the game. And he said, yep. That's yeah, because D'Lo, who is 6'4", took a that, charge yeah. from Sabonis. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, something I would never do, you yeah. know, obviously. But uh, D'Lo is really trying on defense. It's, it's, it's been fun to watch. But, that was good. But, Allie, as a sideline reporter yourself, what, uh, for years in Cleveland, yep. five years? Six years. Six years. How would you have answered that question? Because I'm like, uh-oh, in my mind right away when, when Stu was like, Brez, what the coaches just tell you? And they really were still in the locker room. Yeah. Would you have just said the I just truth? liked how blunt you were. There's nothing wrong with the way you said it. I thought it was hilarious. Okay. I thought it yeah. was funny. Yeah, I probably just would have used different words. I yeah, I don't would, know. Would you have you said did, well, you the coach great. just said and then just made some some stuff up? No, okay. I would not have done that. So that's what someone down there was telling me to do and I'm like, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that. And, yeah, and no, no. Well, it, and no it wasn't BT. Hey, let me tell you something. I really thought you hand. did a great job. I read some of your stories at the LA Times and there were times we thought you made it up to. <laughs> Really? So, oh yeah. BT, yeah, we covered imagination. We covered so many That's crazy deep. teams. That's it's it's deep. not it's hard to make stuff up when it when no. reality is that was that crazy. No, you're right. There was nothing being made up during those days. Although I didn't cover the Shaq Kobe teams like Oof. you did. I came at the very tail end of that just for like two months. Yeah, covering Shaq and Kobe. Run. I had hair. <laughs> By the end of it, I became bald. You're blaming that on Shaq and Kobe. Yes, you were not around, Allie. <laughs> If you were there, you'd have gray hair right now. I can't even I can't even picture what you looked like with hair. I can. I just figured you came out the womb looking like that, and you've been like that ever <laughs> since. Actually, I did come out bald. <laughs> did you? <laughs> I don't know. I have to ask my mom. BT, wasn't there a crazy couple days where, like, Shaq would talk and say something? Just hey, because before you go, yes. we, we got a perfect uh, nickname in the control room. Yeah? Baldrick. Baldrick. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of God has spoken. That's a good one. Be more. Watch it. Be it was more. Dan. I couldn't pick the curtain. That was good. <laughs> that who, was good. who did that? That was Dan. Nice job, Dan. That was a good one. Way to go, Dan. Danny <laughs> Boy. I sent some Carry on. There. Carry Ball. on. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, no, no. Those, those, were the, those were some great days. Yeah. And the big guy always was interesting. Yeah. Oh, you loved that him. Way. Oh, I loved him to yeah. death. I mean, the guy would say, New Year's Eve, what are you doing New Year's Eve? Nothing. I'm having a party. Come by my house. So you would. He goes, I'm having a birthday party. And you get there, you look up, and you see some really interesting people in there. Yeah. All the time. 
So yeah, that was a fun time. Interesting people, including Robert Ory. I was just about to say, <laughs> before we get into Lakers talk, yes, there was something that happened on our show yesterday with Brez on the sidelines. Oh. So he handled all of the pregame what interviews, happened, including Brez? it was right off the top of the show in the A block. Yeah. And um, Robert Ory was on the show for the first time. And Brez revealed to us that Rob pretty much big-timed him. Yeah, texted him a couple weeks ago. I said, Rob, what are you doing? Because I, I missed his birthday, so I felt bad. I've been mm. trying to get up there to see him. I was in uh, Canada, I think. And I said, hey, uh, what are you doing? You know, We, we want to take you out for dinner. And he said, I'm in San Francisco. And I knew it was maybe like his anniversary or, or maybe his wife's birthday. I said, cool, where are you staying? And I, I never heard back from him. That was two weeks ago. So on air last night, BT... I brought it up with him. First and, thing he talked about. Yeah, I, I, was, I was very hurt by it. And uh, he said, well, maybe I didn't want you to know. I said, well, I was going to send you a nice bottle of wine. So now I'm going to send you a big box of wine with a spigot. <laughs> and Has, Rob said, I'll, I'll take oh, that. I'll take Has it. Rob ever big-timed you? Well, he did FaceTime me when I was in Paris. And I responded to him when I should not have. Because was, I was feeling kind of good about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but he FaceTimed at a normal time it was maybe two in the morning my mm -hmm. time so i was back lama autumn on the other hand he facetimes at 4 30 a.m what up bro what up son <laughs> like lamar what do you want i'm at the dodger game that's right you're in paris right i am lamar what do you want <laughs> <laughs> you so, said that i'm just checking on you son want to see your face son now you see it can i go back to sleep all right son Hit me back, son. I mean, this is Lamar Odom to perfection. And I have not heard back from him since, of course. No, I'm wrong. He's probably scared to call you. He FaceTimed me two weeks ago. I didn't pick up. Rude. BT, how many years did you cover the Lakers? Oh, man. 30? Not that long, Brez. Not quite. Yeah. Off and on. You subtly, you so subtly dropped that someone wanted to see your face. I never get those kind of calls. <laughs> Um, we, we need congrats. to get Odom on the Kudos. podcast, BT. Next time you're here, bring, bring L.O. You know, I will. Yeah, he's great. One this is the player. perfect day to have the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> to have the both of you here because you both were in Anaheim. So you guys got to see the Lakers up close and personal. And I will say this. Surprisingly, yeah. for a preseason game, Mike Bilderhand was there. I was shocked by that. <laughs> Because I know, I know you always say, I was in the studio. I was working. But well, he, was on, he was on site. Bro, bro, we work. No, no, you, you work. Oh, okay. I mean, we'll stop there. I mean, no, the, he works too. Two of the three, we work. The other guy works on his hair, <laughs> works on his you tan. So Talk about Geeter like that. Works on <laughs> kickball when he strikes yeah. out. No, the, the co-ed adult kickball league actually ended about five or six years ago, BT. Had to drop it. Really? Yeah, just, I was working too hard. That's a shame. Yeah. I, wish, I would love to play kickball. Yeah, but it so was, fun. It was good to see Bears there last night. I mean, I thought to myself, he and I had some great times down here, and we both thought back to Kobe being Bryant. Yep. That when he played and, and had Anaheim. games down there, yep. it was packed. Mm. You couldn't get a seat. This time, you could get a seat yeah. all over. Yeah. But it was still a good crowd. Well, Allie, okay. see, Kobe lived in Orange County. He did. Uh, 20, uh, probably 25, 30 minutes from Anaheim. Okay. So Orange County, first of all, L.A. loved Kobe, period. Right. Second of all, Orange County kind of adopted Kobe as their own because he lived down there mm -hmm. pretty much his entire career. He lived in Palisades for a little bit, BT? In the beginning. Yeah, then I think he moved down to, to Newport Coast. So uh, the, the Anaheim games were just – and his oh. family was always at those games too. And mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was special, even for preseason. You know, always and, a guaranteed and sellout. And Kobe and Kobe play like it was the NBA Finals. <laughs> like, yo, dude, In the hey, preseason. Yeah. It's a preseason game. Yeah. But that's all he knew. Yeah. And that made him great. No doubt. Um, okay, so the Lakers are 2-1 and one here in the preseason. Yes. What last night did not play five guys, three of which are starters. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Austin Reeves, of course, Jared Vanderbilt and Cam Reddish were both out as well. But you beat the Kings full roster. Two and one again here in the preseason. What letter grade are I know it's the preseason. What how impressed have you been? What letter grade are you giving the Lakers right now? Yep. Go ahead. BK. Maybe not letter grade. Like what's your overall gist? One word to describe them. Depth. Yeah. Because they have that the backcourt last night was basically two 
combo point guards, I guess we'll call Vince, Gabe Vincent and D'Angelo Russell. The two of them worked well together. That was fun to see. Torian Prince playing like it was game 25 of the regular season. Really good on defense, knocking down shots, taking charges, arguing with the referees. Yeah. Till one ref, he goes, hey, the last game we played, you called a foul on me for that. I'm thinking, dude, dude, this is game three of the preseason. <laughs> but he was that in tune to the game. Good point. That mm -hmm. he had to argue a point that he wanted to get across. Next time down court, got the call. Yeah. Way to go, Torian Prince. Hey, they, yeah, we were sitting right, right at the court side, Allie. It was a uh, nice little... Nice little yeah. seats we had. And uh, to me, the word I would use would be free. You know, a year ago, just so much uncertainty. We ha all had a feeling the chemistry was not going to be there. Um, weird, weird roster. And this year, none of that. None of that. Now, because there's good chemistry, doesn't mean necessarily you're going to be a great team. But it, it's, it's a definite step in the right direction. All the pieces they, they've picked up have all contributed at one point or another. Um, just in these, in the first three preseason games, it, it's been it, Gabe Vincent last night four threes. You know, D'Angelo, he's been on fire. He's shooting like over sixty percent from three point range. It's, he those looked really good. Yeah, he's and he is, he, he looks really good. Um, and I would argue really quick, just from mm -hmm. D'Angelo, he's a baller. Like D'Angelo Russell is just a flat out. He can just play, right? Yeah. But I feel like watching him right now he just has like that comfort there's no like questioning there's no kind of like looking over your shoulder is this guy going to be here mm -hmm. what do I need to learn about this teammate and again I, I know it's early in the preseason but I think that's the one thing that stood out he's always been a confident guy right we know that but there just seems to be a much more natural rhythm and flow right now not just for him but within the flow of the offense there's one other with me with him, big thing with him, he had a son. Mm. And I noticed that change in him, just talking to him a little bit more about, so what's it like having a son now, mm. having a kid? And he's proud to talk about it. He goes, man, I got this little dude. And to see him, he's not here in LA with him, but when I was, he saw him over the summer, he kept going like, man, it was a pretty impressive thing. Just having a kid changes you. And to hear him talk about basketball is very important. But nothing is more important than that son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there's the stat right there. Uh, if you're watching a 62% from three-point range, eight for 13. And BT, along those lines, uh, in the locker room last night after the game, you know, the beat writers wanted to, to talk to D'Lo. And, and instead, they were on the other side of the arena. It was set up kind of oddly, logistically. Uh, all the beat writers were talking to Darvin. So, you know, Darvin, hey, he, I, I love his press conferences. He's always got, like, good word plays. Yes, he does. He, he's, he's fun. Uh, sometimes a little cagey with which uh, lineups he's going to uh, tell us about or not. But last night, he was talking post game. You know, he, he talked for, what, 10 minutes, BT? 12, maybe? About that. He, he yeah. went for a while. You know, actually, it only went about five minutes, but it took us a half an hour to get across the court <laughs> to the uh, locker Bottom room. line, <laughs> when, when the, when the uh, Laker locker room opened, opened excuse me, I was the only uh, reporter there. So I go in there with the camera, and he's, he's ready to go. And he's, he's, he's dressed. He's, his uniform is nowhere to be seen. He's, he, he's ready to go home. And uh, one of the Laker PR people says, Brez, can you go, uh, go interview Rui first? I know you wanted to talk to him. We're going to wait for the beat writers. So I went to talk to Rui for three or four minutes. And then she said, okay, how about now you go talk to Christian Wood? No problem. We wanted to talk to him, too. He had 13 points. He's starting to fill in, fit in a little bit better, too, I should say. So I go back to D'Lo, and the beat writers were still maybe with Darvin. Yes. And D'Lo says, you know, I have a son now. I kind of want to get back to him. Mm -hmm. And so we decided, you know, we'll, we'll break out this interview. Um, the, the writers can, can see the quotes and everything. And, you know, D'Lo, just, just a, a long-winded testimony to what you just said. The son has really uh, added to the maturation level for sure. I love that, too, because oftentimes we can forget that these guys are human. Yeah. As well, and you just never understand the influence and things that they do have in their life. Thank you, professional dad. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of God is now in our ear. The professional well, dad. <laughs> I love <hey>. that. <laughs> um, Good to know. I do. One thing that came from that uh, press conference with D'Lo, though, is the, and it's floating around on social media right now, standing out to a lot of people, is his want and desire, the awareness defensively? Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, why? Like, what do you? Why are you? No, sorry, because we got sucking? the quotes from that Michael presented to him those questions. So they sent us the audio, mm -hmm. and as I'm listening and I'm transcribing it, hearing D'Angelo say that he does, he wants to be on the court. He doesn't want him not being able to play defense to keep him off the court. Yeah. That way to go, kid, because it will. Yeah. Especially playing for Darvin Ham. If you can't defend someone, then either go out there and score 30 and your man gets 28 and you're plus two, or you're scoring 15 and your guy's got 25, uh, that ain't going to work. Yeah. You have well, to be able to defend yeah. some. Yep. And he realizes it, too. Yes. And like I said earlier, he took a charge from Sabonis, uh, blocked uh, De'Aaron Fox's shot towards the end of the second quarter. So he was active defensively, no doubt. And before the game, Darvin even said, D'Lo's at the forefront, his word, of the cohesiveness that the team is feeling right now. Uh, Darvin said, I love how he's in command of the ball on offense and, and uh, competing on defense. That's what Darvin said. Right. Because right. D'Lo not known as a defender. Gabe Vincent, good defender. Austin Reeves, good feisty defender. D'Lo, that's not been his forte. But for him to have said that last night, I was like, okay, okay. And another thing he told me a couple days ago, he said um, he's putting more emphasis on this preseason. He was drafted in 2015. You know, you're probably interested the first few years as a pro. Then you're like, mm. okay, preseason, whatever. But he came into this year, and he said, I I'm going to take this. He didn't say seriously. He said, I'm, I'm going to put more, more emphasis, I think he said, on this preseason. And it shows. I mean, he's doing everything on offense and doing a lot on defense, too. Anything else, Dad? No. Good. Uh, I think we, you know, we hit him pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Three preseason games in. You've got Warriors on Friday. You've got the Bucks on Sunday, both here at Crypto.com Arena. And then they round out on the 19th against the Suns in Palm Springs. Do you guys think that Darvin Ham knows who that fifth starter is? I think he does. Yeah. And it's just not saying. Who do Although you think? I'm curious if the injury to Vanderbilt has, not to say he's going to be that guy, but has that kind of made things a little bit more challenging for them. Mm -hmm. But I, I think they know. They just won't tell us. And I'm curious to see. I've asked Darwin about Rui. Can he also defend threes? I'm trying to see if I can get a little bit out of him because we know he can go at fives. He did that last year, last season. We know he defends fours. But is he good enough to defend small forwards and be active and not hurt them on defense. Because we know at this stage, LeBron really should be defending power forwards mm -hmm. or fours. Mm -hmm. you know, so if it's Rui, can he guard Jason Tatum? I mean, no one really can, but can he put the effort in? Or is it Torian Prince, who we know is the 3 and D guy? Or is it Vanderbilt? But can you keep Vanderbilt on the court often enough because his offense is challenged somewhat? So there are options there. Who is going to be? It might be Mike Brezelhan. Okay, nope. that's going too far. Nope. No chance. No chance. That was a good break, though. Um, I'd like to show you guys my defensive stance, though, sometime, though. It's, I, it's I, pretty special. I, we're cool with that. <laughs> yeah. I've seen um, you play defense, Mike. You, you played in Pasadena High School, though, right, PT? I guess we, we went. Back when you had hair. I guess my high school. He, he looks like a dinosaur when he plays defense. <laughs> We had a whole demonstration <laughs> on the pregame show about a week ago. Don't hurt yourself, Brass. Yeah, please. no, I actually did. Did you? Kind of <laughs> tore my groin a little bit. It was, it was, Are was you pretty, lying? No, I'm totally serious. Does your leg look like JJ Watts? It, it's it's JJ Watts. It's not that. <laughs> he got, you saw that post. <laughs> Don't Keep compare talking. those I'll get it two. Up. Although, Keep did going. he go to Wisconsin yes, for a hot second? he did go to Wisconsin, Brad Turner. And then he transferred somewhere else, right? No, no, no. He transferred into Wisconsin from Central Michigan. Okay, I thought he yeah. transferred out of that school. Who that place. That? No one does that. We get all the good transfers. J.J. Watt, Russell Wilson. People want to play for us, BT. Unlike your San Diego Tech. Where'd you go? San Diego. San Diego State University Aztecs. Yeah. I'll have Look at know. this. That's a program. This might be the craziest thing I've ever seen. What? Oh, wow. This was when he. What? He was just, he was deciding which <sighs> to go for the sack or a different route. And he got leveled. He said, he talked about it on the Pat McAfee show. And that was his leg. Is like growing. Yeah, oh like, my God. Yeah, for three weeks. Isn't that wild? And this dude kept playing? This is what happened. Put yeah, some dirt duh. on this it. This is what happened to Brez the other night when he got into a defensive stance. Yeah, it, yeah. Um, it was more the slides. James had me doing slides. I think that's that's <laughs> yeah, when the, the so bad funny. stuff happened. <laughs> and you had the right shoes on and everything, right? 
Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, did actually. you? Really? Yeah. yeah. Can't How, even blame that. Was your hair moving also? When hair you was did good. Slides, moving, yeah. Wearing a okay. suit, though, so I felt a little restricted. Uh, yeah. Hey, Brez, I've seen your suit. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was a slight dick. Uh, all right, anything else you guys want to weigh in before we go to Bucket of Brick? Feel good? You know, About your thoughts? Yeah, questions, good. comments, concerns? Are you are you picking Tori and Prince as your fifth starter? I am not. Are you? I'm going to go Vando. So, it's so going to come down to two things. You're going Vando? Yeah. yeah. Vando. I mean, look, they've invested so much time and money in Vando and, um, and Rui over the next four, three to five years. I mean, Rui's got three more years. Vando's got five more years under contract, yeah. including this year. I mean. And, Brez, Vando is their best wing defender. Correct. Correct. Best defender behind AD. So you need someone out there that can slow someone down. Yeah. I mean, I think he's working on his three-point shot from the corner. If he makes those, yes. then he becomes a valuable weapon for them all y around. Yep, it comes down to two things. You just hit one of them. How has Vando's offense improved yes. since we last saw him? And has Rui's defense improved yes. with all his workouts with LeBron since we last saw him in a regular season? In a playoff game, I should say. Whoever did better, Vando's offense or Rui's but defense, I, look, maybe that's Rui your, looks that's your good starter. out there. I mean, he looks like he... Yeah. Very he confident. doesn't want to Vandal's be the starter. He game. wants to finish the games, is what he told us. Yeah, on media that day. I could see. So, yeah. yeah. And, I and, like the defensive approach. Yeah. And Torian, it, just to just finish my thought, he's on a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. So we're, Whereas they've invested time and money in Rui and Vando. And don't get me wrong, they like Torian. And he does a little bit of everything. Like, he's a good combo of both those guys. He can shoot. He can play a little defense. He can take the ball to the, to the hole. So he's good, too. I mean... Unfortunately, one of those three guys is going to end up losing some time. It's hard to play three smalls every single night. Right. But um, I, I just think that it's, it's probably – I've been saying Rui, but I'm starting to shift towards Vando a little bit because of, like you said, he's just such a good defender. And, again, opening night is the 24th of October. Jared Vanderbilt is out with a heel injury, but for precautionary reasons. Yeah. So, it's, it's, I don't think it's – And where's the first game at? Denver. Denver, Colorado. I'll be there. If you're going to be there, raise your hand. Al, you're going. Oh. No one knows that I'm going, but I'm going to go. <laughs> so, Allie, breaking news. You're not going to be there? I, my boss didn't tell me I could go, but. Well, who's not going to be there? Raise your hand. I'll be right in the studio right here. Right in the studio. But please, <laughs> don't play any more defense, okay, Brass? I don't want to look like J.J. Watt, so I'm, I'm going to refrain. Okay. Lake Show fans, remember, you can be a part of the show each week. Feel free to send us your question in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's a round of Bucket or Brick. Welcome back to Lake Show Podcast, presented by Jack in the Box. If you're enjoying this show, you can check out more original podcasts from our Spectrum News journalists on the Spectrum News app. Just head to the podcast section to listen to the latest episodes. You can download the Spectrum News app on the App Store or Google Play. Bucket or Brick, presented by Jack in the Box, is where we go next. NBA rankings. What a fun time. Season has arrived. ESPN is doing their annual list, and the NBA GMs recently completed their survey. So let's dive into some of the rankings and get your thoughts. Okay. Do not hold back. Okay. Okay? Do you know what you're doing, Brad? That was so weird. Broderick? Uh, Broderick. Holla at me. I'll let you know then. Holla. <laughs> Austin Reeves ranked 66 in ESPN's Top 100, ahead of OG Ananobi, Michael Porter Jr., Brooke Lopez, and behind... Miles Turner, Rudy Gobert, and Scotty Barnes. Bucket or brick, AR at 66. Ooh. I'm going to brick that. Um, like, I, I, th I think, like, Anunobi probably should be ahead of him. Um, Brooke Lopez has been doing a lot for a long time. He should probably be ahead of him, too. But who are the guys below him? Behind and behind. Oh. Or, I'm sorry. Above in front him. of him? Yeah. Miles Turner, Rudy Gobert, and Scotty Barnes. Yeah. I, I, I take two of those out probably and take I'm Miles Turner um I feel like uh I don't know I, I'd probably take Reeves ahead of him I think we've seen what Miles Turner is at this point good player but I, th mm. I think Reeves could be really special so I'm gonna go he should probably be 70 maybe a little bit lower I, I want to see more from him like Ananobi Brooke Lopez we know what those guys can do they're, you know they're they're good they're real good I'm going with the basket you know why this is why Bezahan why I believe all this is based on the way he played for USA in the FIBA World Cup. Okay. And speaking with Alvin Gentry last night, who works for the Kings, Alvin said if he wasn't the best player on the team for USA, he played the best. <laughs> the last thing we saw, last time we saw him play, was in FIBA. We all watched that. 
Well, even I watched it from Paris. Okay, no, I didn't. But you know what I mean. <laughs> based on that performance, the GMs are, I'm assuming, basing their opinion on what they saw. And he was really, really good. I think he could be special. I just so don't want that's to... why he was ranked at that level because you think of the last event of something mm -hmm. and you base your rankings on that. I, I think he could be really special. I don't want to put the expectations too high too soon. Ahead of a lot of yeah. these guys who have won championships and that type of thing. Like, you know, kind of like I, I told uh, Maxwell Lewis last night after his great dunk mm. in Vegas on the air. We only gave him like an eight and a half or a nine. He's a rookie. You know, he's got he's to yeah. prove it to us. Okay. Yeah. All right. LeBron and AD listed as nine and ten, respectively, on the ESPN's top 100. Saw that. They're the only two on the same team to be in the top ten. Bucket or Brick? Ooh. They should be. The only team with two in the top ten. Go ahead and get some hoops on that one. I like that. Because when they're healthy, they are a dynamic duo, two of the best in the league. And because of them, the Lakers got to the Western Conference Finals based on their play. So the GMs, I know a few of those guys, they got it right. Oh, okay. It's tempting to say Lillard and Giannis mm. should be on there. Gian Giannis, I think he was number one on their list. But Giannis was, they have yes. not played yeah. together yet, Michael. That's the Bezzer. thing. Hand. That's the thing. I want to see them together. Um, yes. maybe, maybe some of the Suns, too. Seven. KD, he seven. was top ten. I don't think. So, KD oh. is seven. Okay, I didn't Booker see Booker is 11. Right. Oh, okay. So, that's pretty close. Booker was But 11, I was huh? shocked to not see the two of them in, in the, the top, top ten. ten. Right. Yeah, that makes sense, too. However, um, you think of the other guys, Steph, Giannis, Embiid, Nicola, Luca, Dame, or not, not Dame, um, Shea. Shea's coming a long way, boy. Durant, LeBron, AD. Who is the other one I'm missing? What about what, Ant Man? Where was he? Was it Dame? Is Dame top Dame? He wasn't, yeah. He was Jason in the Tatum, 40s, I think. Where was he? He was not in there. Wow. No, Tatum, that's one. Tatum was eight. No, Shea was eight, Tatum was six, Katie was seven, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's I mean, nice who would you take out to put Booker in? It's always yeah. that, you know. Yeah. That's tough. But I, I, that's somewhere I would say I maybe have. Shea, bump him down to 11, put Booker in there somewhere. You know, one I mean, Shea had a breakout year. I was he bumped up that, 41 yeah. spots. Shea. Wow. That's huge. He, I got wow. to cover him as a rookie when he played for the Clippers. That's right. And you saw something there. But I didn't see this. Yeah. There's no way I thought he'd break out and become this phenomenal all-star player, the potential to lead his team perhaps into the playoffs, not just a playing game this, next, this season coming up. Yep. Can it be sustainable? If so, then, yeah, he should be top yes. ten. Yeah. Skilled kid. How many bricks do you guys have? Last? I got, I got two. You got, okay, I need you to get all of the bricks out, and I need you to start throwing them at the basket right now. Because this is strictly a brick. All right. Okay. Oh. Just, do you trust me? <laughs> that is a pathetic. <laughs> oh, shit. <geez. laughs> oh, throw all the bricks out there? All of them. Brick. The GMs left AD off the best defenders list in That's their annual so survey. Bad. Oh. How, how many defenders do they list? Five, I think, in each category? Five. Uh, you know I was going to say, there were some ties in there. So there's like yeah, six guys. You know guys. what I think? I think I saw some of those GMs in Amsterdam when I was there. <laughs> well, you, were you carrying your bricks? So there I'm were just, bricks on the side of the road. Because well, what is that? They were carrying something with them in Amsterdam. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, guys. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Seriously, right? Let's be real. Yeah. Who, who was on there that they would have kicked him off for? We just. Uh, Did it matter? No. That's, that's bad. Three of the five. That's bad. AD is a top three at least. Top two. Yeah, he should be on that list. Yeah. It, I, I, I don't understand it. No, and you're no absolutely way. right, Allie. Thanks for having us throw all the bricks no, at the basket. You're right. Because that, that was a terrible one. That's, that's, that makes no sense. You may need him back for okay. this last one. But right. I don't know. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. One more on AD. His head coach, Darvin Ham, wants him to attempt six threes per game. Bucket break, you're down with Darvin. Yes, absolutely. Fire away, I AD. got a phone call today from a former NBA player that says, no, he should not. So <laughs> I'm going with that. Who? Who I'm, was the? 
Don't I'm, be that guy. Who I'm, was it? I'm breaking that. <laughs> six? No, not six. Yes. No. BT, fire It's only away. three attempts at half. One shoot. It's literally under two a quarter. Let AD play. Four Let AD a play. game is enough. For AD. I want AD. What if he's open? Okay. Is he going to be open to shoot six of them? I a mean, game? if yeah. they're playing, if they're playing the numbers from the last two seasons, he's going to be open. Four is enough, I think. Was he three for six but when so he's, far? I think. He's not Shaq. No one's Shaq. Oh, yeah, okay three, then. One for three. So and he's taking what a three a game, four a game right now. Yeah. All right. But he's only playing half his time. Nah, four is more than enough. He said four is more than enough. <laughs> yes. I want to see him shoot eight. Brez hand. I want to. See, I want to see you do something with your hair. Bucket or brick, <laughs> Brez. Ooh. Knows how to play defense. Will you please show Broderick <laughs> Turner your defensive stance right now and let him bucket or brick? Based off of his stance alone, <laughs> Brez was I don't need to see the stance. player of the year you know, back I, I, at Buckley I, High School. I don't School. want to injure myself again. Is that where you went? Okay. But I will uh, I'll try. I'll try. Okay. Can okay. I stretch for like half an hour? No. Can I, uh... Hey, Brez, give me that, give me my bricks, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I will try. Oh my goodness. And this is the last time we'll be doing this. Don't forget what Big Game said. Uh, what did Big Game say? So what did it tell you? Guys, Okay. Oh, see, that was good. That's great. Yeah. That's great. How about that? Yeah. That was really and good. I didn't hurt myself, BT, probably because I didn't throw it. What, bucket or brick? That was pretty good. Thank you. That was good. good yeah. Wow. Practicing at home. So you listened to Big Game, but Yeah, listen to Big Game. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, we had a little it, tutorial right here, right here in, the, in the studio. I am Michael Brezzer. Yeah. But you know so what I'm, was uh, more imp impressive? His hair did not move. It just <laughs> went right along with it. Do you want to see what the control room did to your hair? Absolutely. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is BT. that what your hair used to look like? Hey, hey, let me tell you what. I'm I was, Allie, I'm going to tell you this. When I had hair, I was six foot ten with my afro. At glance, it actually looks really ten. good. <laughs> you kidding me? I had a big old fro bouncing around like that. Uh, You're such a liar. I like that. Uh, 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 uh. Look, it can keep up with you. BT, I wish I went to high school with you. I bet you were amazing in the, uh, in the 70s. <laughs> yes, I was, Brad, as I am in the 2020s, too. Oh, I have you know. <laughs> He's I don't doubt himself. it. He is feeling himself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I like the hair. Yeah. Keep it. S see that, Shaq? If you didn't bother me all year long with your crazy stories, I'd have hair now. It's his fault. It's always someone else's fault. <laughs> He's back. We're going to have you look like that on the show tonight. <laughs> BT. Uh -huh. God, he looks uh, sexy. Uh, uh, right uh, uh. What would, if that's, okay, say that's like your your alter ego, what would the name be? What, what be, What's the name of that guy? It's not Broderick. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh. No. My nickname in high school was Mad Brad. <laughs> Mad Brad. Yes. There you go. For no I reason, can't. actually. I they just named it that because. I do an MGB Brad. as a senior in high school, a rag top. And my license plate said, Mad Brad. You were Mad probably Brad. like the homecoming. Did you have an email that was Mad Brad? The, the homecoming king. Were you a prom king? I wasn't that nerdy. That's popularity That's contest. That's popularity. BTS, a, nerdy. a nerd popularity contest. Okay, that means he wasn't. Let me tell you this. My high school, just so you guys know, my high school basketball team went to Europe to play basketball. My first time going to Paris was in high school to shoot hoops. Raise a hand. I'm going to break that. And we played five on five, not three <laughs> on three like you did when you were in high school. We um, did play eight man football, but we played five Mad on five Brad, basketball. Brad, you're always welcome back. Great to have Thank you on you, the Lake Allie. Show podcast. Thanks to you for listening to the Lake Show podcast, Speaking Up, presented by Jack in the Box. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast app. We want to hear from you. Send us your questions. Hit us up on X at Really Clips and Peter 3 at Mike underscore like cool Bros. Music Until again. next week. I love that hair, Brez. <laughs> guys look great. <laughs> Captain Awesome right here. Captain Awesome.